On tonight's show, I'm joined by musician Jack Gill, comedian Gary Highland, and him, John May. How are we? How are we? With my mate Dean. What's happening? Look at you, lads. You look so smart. Where are you going? <laughs> Shit house. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much. Welcome back. Thank you everyone at home for tuning in to another episode of Friday Night with Dean Aldridge. If you've seen the last episode, what was I thinking? I had a grey hoodie on. Did you see the state of me back fat? That's never happening again. I am staying in the suit. Now last week we never had an episode, so thank you for coming back to us. I hope you've all scoffed your face with loads of Easter eggs. I'm the kind of dad who buys a load of Easter eggs and they don't even make it to the day, so... Now, our first guest, as ever, I'm not going to keep you waiting, am I? Our first guest is Jack Gill, and this is his song, Our Time. Jack Gill with his single, Our Time. 
Jack, thank you for coming on, mate. No worries, mate. Tell us a little bit about the song, mate. What was the motivation behind it? Yeah, so writing that one, I wanted to write something like nice and rock and roll up beat, you know what I mean? Sort of, not last year, the year before it was. So we uh, listened to a lot of like early Beatles stuff, yeah, yeah. that sort of thing like that. So we. Uh, that's how that one came about, really. It's a cracking song, mate, as we've just seen there. Um, where can people download it? Yeah, everywhere. Spotify, Apple Music, everything. Whatever All platforms, you YouTube, it's out everything, there. yeah. It's on everything. Brilliant. Yeah. Just tell us a quick something about yourself, mate. Where, where is it you've grew up? How did you get into like, Yeah, so guitar? getting into music, it's, it's, it's a funny one. It's, you know, pretty cliche being a scouser. It's growing up on the Beatles That's and that, it, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, like, my half fella used to, like, yellow submarine and all that. That was the nursery rhymes going up. So, it's from him, really, coming from him. And then it's just progressed throughout the years. And uh, it was stop start when I was a bit younger. I picked up a guitar when I was about 15, listening to uh, Oasis Songbird. Having a listen to it, it was like, yeah, it's only three chords, it'll be easy, that. Obviously, not having a jar of glue, you know what I mean? <laughs> Didn't have a clue what I was doing. So, um, and then sort of put it down. It was probably about five, six years ago, picked it up again properly. And, Got back into it from there, like brilliant. What are your plans for the future? You've got any dates coming up where you're performing? Yeah, or? yeah. So luckily enough, I, was, I managed to get a, um, a gig in sort of in that that mid sort of lockdown period in yeah, June. Yeah. So uh, it was one of the only ones that went on. And all honesty, but yeah, we've got one coming up in Jimmy's. We don't know if it's going to be August or September. Yeah, just waiting to get the green light on it. Where would that be on sale? To like if skittle, and yeah, stuff skittle like that, and all stuff yeah. like that. The general ticket things. If you just keep an eye, like on my Spotify, uh, sorry, my Instagram and stuff like that, you'll you'll see when Brilliant. it's going on. You've got a new release as well. What's that called? With, yeah, with me, that's called. Me. You're gonna yeah. perform that for us tonight as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. On, yeah. Well, listen. Sorry, we can't take up any more of your time, mate. But thank you for coming on. It's been a great guest. Appreciated anyway. And make sure you all stick around for the second song, and make sure you download it all as well. Jack Hill, ladies and gents. Thanks, man. So my next guest is stand-up comedian Gary Highland. Gary, thank you for coming on, mate. No worries, mate. Good it's pleasure. Mine. Like it's always good to be around you, lads. It's a pleasure. I've missed you. I've missed you too, lad. Right, I just want to start beer? with something, Gary, just because, obviously, I've done your podcast recently. You have. And at the very start of the podcast, you just <laughs> told me I've not. You're not having so, my kicks off of your eye. I just want to know, mate, what, what is it? What, I've heard today you got completely naked on a stag do and stuck your penis between your legs. <laughs> <laughs> You're a two, you know. Uh, yeah, so basically we went to, went to Ireland um, on my brother's stag do and we went uh, coasting. So we were jumping off, you know, cliffs, rocks into the sea and uh, I lost my GoPro, fell off my chest and uh, my cousin, it was like, it was about 25 foot down and the guide was like, can't get it, it's too deep. And I was like gutted. I was like, I'm not asked about the camera, I said it's all the photos and videos that we had. So my cousin Steve was like, I'll go down. But the clothes, the wet tooth he had on was too buoyant, so we had to strip off and dive down to get it. So we got it. So I felt our last then, so I was like, well, I'll do a little forfeit, forfeit. And there was a dip tank. So I just stripped off Bolico and dived in this dip tank, thinking it was funny. It was like full of bleach and everything. My eyes were fucking stinging. I just put me bit between my legs and I'm a little manjana. I was just like running around. My beard was fuming, lad. It was funny. I'll be honest, you didn't need to explain it. No, I did. <laughs> I'm so glad you did. Do you want the picture to plug? <laughs> Send it. If you've got a picture, <laughs> we are putting that on. That's brilliant. Mate, so, like myself, you're fairly new to stand up. I am. How was you finding it before lockdown? If, well, to be. I've been thinking about stand up for some time, um, and I, I always just sort of shit out last minute. I uh, I've been writing little bits and was just a little bit too scared to talk in front of people. And then with lockdown, I was like, we all could be dead tomorrow, so I might as well jump at it now. So I signed up um, for Beat the Frog, and that was my first gig in September. And I fell in love with it, just being on stage, just the adrenaline rush you got. Um, so I wanted to stick at it, but I've not had that many gigs. But you know, it's one of them things, innit? What was it? You've done like 10 gigs, weren't it? Uh, yeah, 10. When we spoke previously, you told me that um, audiences didn't know how to take you because yeah, so, yeah, some yeah. of the material material you use... Can be a bit touchy. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So how did you find the rooms when you were telling these jokes? What did you learn from that? Um, do you know what, right? The jokes that sort of split the room, I set them up by saying, I like saying things that make people feel that awkward, they don't know how to react. Yeah. So that's the exact reaction I got. So even though I didn't get a laugh, I was like, did it really fail? Because that's how I set it up. I just need to learn how to find the funny in the material and set it up differently. But uh, but I'm not that bothered to be fair. That's what you learn from when bet, the room doesn't laugh. I bet you're looking forward to performing again, no means. Massively, like, just can't obviously wait. Obviously being in the same boat as you, yeah. I've got this age just to get back on Massively, the stage. Massively, yeah. And, crazy isn't it but um, obviously lockdown happened and you started up a podcast I did what do you want to tell us about that uh, yeah so uh, now then podcast with Gary Highland I 
I like just talking crap. I just I do it all the time. I don't shut up in work. I just roll my mouth all the time and I thought, put it on some platform. Let's just talk shit, you know what I mean? Um I get guests in and I like to just sort of dive into their life a little bit and talk about three major topics and then Because bits of it are serious parts. Yes. You have a laugh during it, obviously, yeah. and sometimes you touch on the news and stuff yeah. like that. What was the idea behind the whole format of well, it? Well, it's, it's the... developing, so we called it now then, in terms of we'll talk about things that are happening now, today, current, and the then is I ask the guests what their aspirations are for the future. But as I've gone on and I've got sort of bigger and more interesting guests on, I find people aren't bothered with them talking about Boris and stuff, so I've tailored it more about their life and their journey. So it's it's developing. But that's it, just talk about them now and then them in the future. That's the now then. Brilliant. How have you, um, have you, have you seen a change in like, your family and friends since you've started comedy and podcasting and stuff like that? Has there been any change with your family? or? Um, not really. My mum says like, oh, I'm proud of you and stuff, but she always has been, you know what yeah. I mean? So nothing really different. Um, my bear's just like, you've got everyone in the house, stop fucking bringing people in the house, <laughs> you know what I mean? She's got to shut up. <laughs> Tell all the three kids to be quiet because I've got a podcast in the dining room, do you know what I mean? So, but it's, uh, yeah, it's no, no change really. That's another thing as well, mate. Like, obviously, we're good mates off set, off cameras, yeah, away yeah. from cameras and stuff like that. And you're, first and foremost, you're a family man. I That's am. what I like about yeah. you. Like, you put your kids and your family first. Got it, yeah. What is it you've seen, like, changing your kids during lockdown? Has it affected them hard or? Um, it has and it hasn't. Um, They've sort of been consumed by devices and the internet and I feel sad because like I always have this conversation with my daughter I'm like when I was your age on a Saturday morning I was having my breakfast going out for five hours coming back having my lunch going back out come back for me tea she won't even leave her bedroom do you know what I mean and <laughs> you see any of them following you into a bit of like showbiz probably Lennon Lennon's he's hard faced he's he's got a boss he's got a boss personality but he's a little prick as well at the same time <laughs> Shout out to Lennon. <laughs> yeah, little Lennon. Listen, mate, if you're out watching, make sure we keep giving him that hard time, all right? Oh, Gary, honestly, mate, thank you for coming on and yeah, taking no up some it time. Also, um, obviously, tell us about your podcast no problem, and stuff mate. like that. Just before I let you go, is there any gigs coming up that you know about? Have you got anything booked in? Uh, so, um, yeah, I've got Frog and Buck uh, Bucket coming up, um, competing in there again. And then I've got a couple in June and August. Um, one in Wigan and one in Manchester. I'm guessing details will be on like your Instagram. Yeah, I like haven't that. shared anything yet because I don't want to get too excited because you know what, Boris and his family, like, do you know what I mean? So, <laughs> tight lift a little bit. Gary, thank you for coming no on. No worries, it was a pleasure. Right. Thank you very really much. See you later, lad. So, my next guest is the creator and star of the hit series Corona Mums. If you haven't seen that before, here's a little clip. Get rid of all negativity for when the baby comes. Fucking sticks! I've been all smelling all nice with me Spanish cream and products and that. Smells like holiday. Reminds me of Alicante. <laughs> hey Kenny, I want you to go to Chippy, the baby is hungry. And I've got cravings, I could merge some shoe mice. Ah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Mr. John May. Thank you very much, Dave. How are you doing? All right, how all right. Are you? I should have said, how are we? How I've, are I've we? got to get it up there, haven't I? I've got to ask you about it straight away. Yeah. John, out of everyone through lockdown, you seem to be the biggest success story, mate. Do you reckon? Corona mums. Made the most out of lockdown. Definitely did. You kept us all entertained. Where did the idea come up from, mate? Um, well, Originally, I, I always had, I wanted to write a sketch show a few years ago, and I've only realised this recently, what I've done. So, I wrote, I wrote loads of characters, loads of different characters, blah, blah, blah. And then when lockdown come, like I've been an actor for years, mm. and I've gone to every audition, I've done this, I've done that, I've fucking... And my whole life can pass without me getting a break. So I thought, I need to carve my own path. Yeah. So I wrote a short film called Just, and it was about the Catholic Church, and I want to get funds and make this happen and all that. And we did, we started the process. And then lockdown come. Mm. So we put the blockers on that. So I started doing little funny videos on Instagram, they were Instagram stories. And they sort of started to 
It was just two women arguing in a supermarket type I of remember, thing. Yeah, yeah, because I thought the first one. lockdown like Christmas, mm. everyone was getting prepared, everyone was getting toilet rolls, everyone was doing this, blah blah blah. So I started doing these sketches, and I got a good response. And then people were like, good. but I had a captive audience, you see, because lockdown had just started. Yeah. So I like, do another one, do another one. So we're doing another one, and then I started changing it, but I didn't realise. I was pulling all these characters out that I created ages ago, mm. like with Craig, he like drops his eyes yeah, at yeah. the end of the thing from over the water, and then I brought in Turkey Teeth, then I brought in Kenny, you know, he's just, his name was Sick Kid originally, but he's just like, just aggressive, you know what I mean? Like that type of thing. Is it fun playing different characters for the same, like that? Yeah. I mean, what is it, four or five different characters you've got? Maybe even more, because you've got like the, the boxer and everything involved now, Yeah, there's the Lash, Karen, yeah. Kirsty, Turkey, Kenny, Derek, Superintendent Fairlow, Craig. Do you just not like casting other people in your store? <laughs> I think that's the niche though, that's, yeah, that's what makes it's, it good. It's brilliant, it really is brilliant. And there is Neil Seed. No, you haven't seen much of Neil Seed. Oh, he's a belt. Oh, no, no. like this, a beast. That's oh. it. Oh, yes. It's a great idea what you've done with it. Um, as I say, like, when I'm watching it, I think I mentioned this to you on the phone the other day. I think I, I think I do it on my own because I'm a control freak, dude. <laughs> I won't even let people edit it. I've got to do it all. I I, I, mean, I know what you mean. Our producer of this show is quite quite like that. We won't uh, we won't bring him in. Hi Sam. Show, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, <laughs> no, but I, I think I said to you the other day, like the camera tricks behind it as well, because there's plenty of occasions where there's two or three of you in the one shot. Yeah. It's well, I done. I opened my barbers and I started acting and in my mind I thought if I want to be an actor I need to learn about film production that was mm. wrong really but I'm glad I did do it so I learned the very basics about film production I was um, Lippo Media Academy I think it was the first ever mm. student to enrol in that college and I have absolutely smashed it now um, so I've got the basics I, I knew the basics and I knew what was possible so I know how to set the camera for all that and then we make Owen, he does a lot of the special effects over yeah. here and I do a lot of the writing with Owen as well. And during like the Christmas time you brought in like a, a lot of well known people from the city as well, you brought in Pete Price, Tony Bell, you yeah. obviously Jazza Dickens who you've yeah. got a podcast with, is is that how the whole podcast idea come about, like did you know each other before it or? Um, no. No, we never. I always, always, I didn't know Jazz, but I've always liked him. Mm. And um, I used to message him, and I was like, "Hello, guys." But we got mm. to know each other. But that thing, the come together Christmas thing, yeah, yeah. there's a guy uh, who owns one ton in Liverpool, uh, Chris and Mark Scano. They do this. Um, it's like a, it's like, it's like for people who are struggling at Christmas and stuff like that. So we've done this campaign, come together Christmas, and I partnered with them, and I wrote this four episode thing, Kenny's Christmas Carol, and uh, we raised seventy thousand pounds. Yeah, I'm sorry, I think someone else was in it as well. I should have mentioned it as well. Paul Smith as well. Yeah, Paul Smith Joker's in it as well. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. So everyone was willing to help, and yeah, yeah. I think everyone was willing to help me because everyone supported me as well, which is great. It's it's good that the whole city's been behind you, mate. I mean, you must have saw through your own like social medias how much it shot up yeah. during the year we've had. I've, yeah, I had four, just hit four thousand followers on Instagram in what March last year, and I just did sixty thousand yesterday. Yeah. So it's gone up like brilliant. Mm. So we touched on it there a little bit, but um, your podcast with Jazza. Yeah. How, how are we, well, family? Which is what, yeah, because Jazza plays a little street urchin in uh, Kenny's Christmas Carol. And I went out to his car and he was like, hey, John, do you fancy doing a podcast? And I didn't fancy doing a podcast yeah. because everyone's, a lot of people are doing podcasts. And I thought, well, the thing is, I thought, no, I'll just do my thing, you know what I mean? But then I did think, because I think me and Jazza have got this thing, I don't know, we're just. Just, I like to think we're nice, decent men. These are, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I like, I want, I thought, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. And we've, we've been doing it. The How Are We Family Land podcast. How are we flying? It's a shame you're just trying to get involved, isn't it? Well, I say How Are We, and Jazza says Family Land. We're coming up with a name. Yeah. The How Are We Family Land podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Something else that you're known for as well, John, is the uh, the pranks that you used to play on the Liverpool. Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or the Liverpool players. Yeah. Well, I've been an actor for years, I've, I've done quite a bit. But uh, someone, one of the producers at Liverpool got in touch. He was like, all right, John, got your number from uh, Liam Smith. I was like, all right, mate. He said, I'm a producer at LFC TV. I was like, all right. He said, I want you in something, but I don't know what. Yeah. So I went, oh, chance. So I did, I've learned, you don't get excited, team. Not that. Yeah. If you do, you're a fool. But um, a few weeks later, he phoned me. and said, I've got this idea. So I, he said, do you mind coming in and bashing ideas about? And I said, yeah. So I come up with the concept. Well... They had the concept, but I sort of come in with a few jokes. And then on the day, 
I had to drive Liverpool players around and the objective was to just make them want to leave the car yeah. like it was blagging to be a chauffeur and uh, they did and they were buzzing they were made up and because of that it was they were buzzing and then they started to get me into write for them so we've been writing sketches for, That's for Liverpool you've done the uh, Ryan Brewster one as well didn't you yeah, Ryan Bruce, yeah that wasn't as good that one but I enjoyed that I think that's my favourite one to be really? fair really yeah he didn't, he didn't bite as much as you wanted him to, but he was still like a bit good. It gutted, never went really. to plan. Yeah. I had a plan where um, I was going to get upset. I was going to I was gonna break down. Like I was going to be a mess of a man. Yeah. And I wanted him to be like, oh, mate. And I wanted to show that side of him, but I made the most of it, you know what I mean? <laughs> so obviously, away from your, your writing, your films and your sketches and winding Liverpool players up, you've got, it, um, you've got a comedy show coming up, I believe, as yeah. well. Yeah, John Mayer Live. sold out. Sold out in less than 60 seconds. That's, that's amazing. Four shows. Is it rescheduled now? Because obviously, that's yeah, changed the dates. It was it? meant to be April, but now it's in July, and I'm just about to announce a tour as well, so I'm going around the country doing it. How are you feeling about it? Um, again, with the thing with the Liverpool players, I, I, like, I had to go in the car and wind these players up, but in my head, I told myself failure is not an option. Mm. This is a big deal for me, the tour. I've never done it before, no. um, but it doesn't mean I can't. And I'll, I am gonna, I'm gonna nail it because that's the next realm for me now. I need, to, I feel I need to prove myself there. Oh and well, was, it's something that I've tried myself. Stands up and the buzz you get from it. Mm. There's not that. I've done acting and stuff like that, but a lot of things that um, you film to do with acting, you don't see it till months later. But once you get that, that first yeah. buzz, mate, I think you're gonna be addicted to it. I don't, I don't see it stand up, you know. I, I don't see are what you, I'm... Oh, because you're doing it in character, aren't you? I'm doing it in character, yeah, yeah, which I suppose yeah. it could be, but it's more of a... Look, I'm playing five different people in a show that might be 50 minutes long. It, I'm going to break it down. It's more of like a variety show. Mm. Um, it's just more of a show. I'm not, I, yeah, I'm not going to call myself a stand-up because I'm not. So we'll see. I'm an actor on stage there. Hopefully I'll get to see it. I mean, so well, I obviously I can't get one for the Liverpool dates at the minute, but when you announce the tour, I might have to go to Manchester or something to get <laughs> It won't be in Manchester, <laughs> mate. <laughs> so, away from that, mate, you're a dad as well. Yeah. Um, how did they feel about you, like, doing all these things and seeing the dad on the screen every week? They're and... not asked. They're just like... <laughs> so, my dad's, you're on this, look. Dad's like, on YouTube. Look me video. <laughs> Sit down, watch it. Not in Chester. But when the teacher's in school or the kid's in school or... Like people, certain parents go, oh, that's your dad, then they get excited. Yeah. But they don't really care now. Can you see, what What can you see in the future? Can you see big things coming in the future? Have you got more ideas or? Um, it's, it takes confidence with me, Dean. I think, you know, like writing, it's like, I've got Liverpool Football Club, probably, you know, at the time, they'd won everything, the biggest football team mm. in the world, and they were asking me to come in and write for them. Yeah. So I started to ask myself the question, I must be able to write. So that's a confidence thing, so Brilliant. I'm still building on that, but I want my own show. I want my own show on TV. Um, speaking to a producer now, we're working on that. And I want to be a live performer, yeah. That's Brilliant. what I want, that's my goal. John, thank you very much for taking some time out, mate. I appreciate you coming on. Anyone who doesn't already support John on his socials or watch anything he's in, make sure you hit him up, okay? John May actor on Instagram, the John May way on YouTube, and just John May. And how are we family on? How are we family on <laughs> podcast as well? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, guys, thank you for joining me for, for another episode of Friday Night with Dean Aldridge. Now to end the show, it's Jack Gill with his new single, With Me.
Let his head and open his eyes. 